Have you ever wished you could control your Sony cameras directly from an Atom switcher, just like Blackmagic cameras? Well, officially, that's impossible. Uh, Atom's camera control was designed only for Blackmagic cameras. But what if I told you there was a way to control Sony cameras, FX3, FX6, A7 IV, and many more, almost as easily as if they were native Blackmagic cameras? Imagine adjusting iris, ISO, focus, zoom, white balance, and even advanced color correction straight from your Atom control panel. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to make this happen. Uh, we developed a solution that allows you to control Sony cameras as if they were Blackmagic cameras. With this setup, you can easily and accurately color match multiple cameras during live productions. On most Sony models, you'll be able to control essential settings like iris, ISO, zoom, focus, and white balance, but also more advanced controls such as contrast, saturation, tint, sharpness, and black level. You can also start stop recording, grab high resolution snapshots, view the camera feed on your laptop, and even toggle the info display overlay on some models. So how does this work and how can you set it up? Um, we've made it possible through our middle control app, uh, version 3 and above, which allows remote control of cameras and gimbal for live production. If you've worked with Blackmagic cameras before, you know the Atom controls them directly via SDI or HDMI. Uh, you can control the cameras using Atom software or the Atom camera control panel. Now, if we want to control Sony cameras, we just have to put them on the same IP network as uh, the Atom and uh, the computer, etc. Uh, the middle control app acts as the bridge. It reads Atom camera control commands on one side in the Atom, and then it converts them into a format Sony cameras can understand and sends them over the network this way. Quick disclaimer, this feature doesn't require any extra hardware like the APCR or APCR Mini. However, it is part of the Middle Control Pro paid extension of Middle Control. We do offer a free trial with access to all the features, so you can check it out. For this tutorial, you'll need a computer running macOS, um, a supported Sony camera, so you can check the full compatibility list in the description, an Atom switcher, a network switch and a Wi-Fi access point or a router that has Wi-Fi built in. So let's get going. The first step is to go to the Mac App Store and download uh, Middle Control. Once you've done this, uh, you can just run Middle Control, uh, go into the Preferences tab here, and then here set the Atom IP address. If you don't have the Atom IP address, you can run a software called Atom Setup. And here your Atom should show up here. And then if you click here, you'll find the IP address here, which is this one. And here, set the proper one, press connect, and there. Middle control is connected to the Atom. You can quickly check if the connection is running properly, so uh, we can just start uh, Atom software control. Uh, so here you can see your cameras, and now uh, if we go to the camera page here, and for instance on camera number three, uh, you can see here that uh, the iris is properly changing. And if we do uh, the other way around, you can see that the Atom reacts to uh, middle control. So we have bi-directional control uh, between uh, the Atom and middle control. We will now be pairing a Sony FX30 camera to middle control. So this is how you do it. You go uh, first into the preferences in middle control pro, and we're going to add a Sony camera. So here you select other Sony camera. This is not an FX6. Wi-Fi, we're gonna pair over Wi-Fi first. Now check if your camera is on uh, video mode. So you press on the mode button and then you select the uh, video mode here. Now press next. We open the menu. We'll go to network, uh, the green menu, and then in control remote, uh, we'll turn the remote function to off, remote tuning to off. We temporarily need to turn off the setting uh, to allow access for another setting, which is uh, in uh, the network option menu, and it's called uh, authentication setting access, and we'll turn this to off. Now we're going to go into access point settings and it's gonna show uh, the um, Wi-Fi access points around. So we're going to connect to our router, press OK, and then you just have to input your password. And once this is done, it's gonna say completed and you are connected to Wi-Fi. Now we're going to go back into uh, the network menu 
and uh, we're going to go back into the setting remote shoot function that we had turned off, which now we can turn on again because access authentication has been disabled. Now, um, just to make sure the camera is properly connected to the network, we are going to go back into the Wi-Fi settings and go into display Wi-Fi info. And here we can see the IP address of the camera. And uh, if it doesn't have any, it means that it did not connect properly to the Wi-Fi. So here uh, we have an IP address so we can move forward. And we are moving to step number nine, which shows uh, the list of the Sony cameras that have been detected on the network. So here we just have to pick the Sony FX30 and uh, we have to press next. Now, before you press the pair button, it's uh, important to go into the pairing menu of the Sony camera. So to do so, you go back into uh, network, uh, connection remote shooting, remote shoot function, and here pairing. Now you can press the blue pair button on the middle control app. And it's important you press OK on the camera as soon as the pop-up shows up. So now we press OK and there we go. The camera has been paired successfully and here we can give it another name. The camera is showing up on the left part of uh, middle control. You can see uh, the camera settings here. You can uh, set it to a specific camera ID. For instance, here we'll put camera ID number two and you can change its name here and its connection status. Now, if you go into the camera tab here and you select uh, camera number two, which is the Sony camera, you can see the live view of the camera in real time. So we'll put it this there for now. And now if we uh, start uh, Atom software control, so here camera number two there is the one which is um, interesting for us. So uh, we can adjust the different settings. If we press this button, it will uh, link the two together. So for instance here, the iris, and you see the two are completely in sync. Uh, we have like the ISO too, and it works in on both software. So here I can uh, lower the iris, etc. And, uh, and there uh, we can lower the gain here. And yeah, we have uh, access to uh, many controls here. If you don't need to shoot in log, um, you can turn the picture profile off and uh, you will have access to more settings like uh, saturation here. So here you can see, you can uh, control uh, this there. Um, you can also control the contrast here. So here we go. Uh, you can control uh, the black level like so. You can control uh, the sharpness here. So uh, this is also controllable. And uh, for these settings to work, it's, as I said, it's worth noting that you have to have picture profile turned off in your camera and it does not work with uh, log recording. We can also uh, turn the status view on and off. So uh, this is basically the info display uh, of the camera and this can be toggled remotely. We can take a snapshot here of the current frame. It will be saved um, on the Mac. Uh, if you want to have um, the values on the software that are exactly the ones of the Sony camera, you can untick uh, the Sony Atom link and then you have uh, direct control over the camera and you'll have proper uh, values showing up. Uh, now uh, we can also do focus. Uh, here you have a new uh, very precise focusing mode here. So this will allow you super precise focus even when the camera is zoomed in um, a long way. What's cool is that actually if I change the focus on the Sony camera, you can see that uh, it's uh, changing in the middle control software. And also if I choose autofocus here, so it's gonna focus automatically. And when it focuses automatically, it also um, sends the current focus uh, back to items, uh, back to middle control, sorry. You can also uh, start the recording on the camera here. Uh, if you press shift, uh, it will start recording on all the cameras that are connected to middle control. If we head over to the gimbal page, we have control over uh, the zoom here. There we go. And uh, we can set a zoom speed if we want like a smaller zooming speed. I can also focus with the ATEM link on and here you can see that uh, in this case, the slider will move uh, accordingly. So here it moves also in ATEM software. Now there's another way you can focus too, uh, which is to use the live view. So currently it's on manual focus, but I can just click here and then it will focus on different parts 
of the image. Maybe this one is a bit too close to focus, but and if I press the autofocus, it's just gonna stay like, I, for example, if I put here, it's just gonna um, uh, make the autofocus uh, each time on this area. And then if I press uh, the tracking option, uh, then I can actually uh, choose a tracking point and it will just uh, keep uh, the tracking here, like as maybe you're used to with uh, Sony cameras. Now you might wonder, what about Wi-Fi performance? Is it really reliable? So here's why we're using Wi-Fi. So first, most Sony cameras only support network control via Wi-Fi. Some Sony cameras can support control over Ethernet with an adapter, like the FX3, FX6, uh, FX30. Um, I will show you how to do so a bit later in the video. Second, Sony's Wi-Fi performance is surprisingly solid even in busy environments. Now, it depends, not all the cameras beha behave the same way, but the, the FX30, the FX3 are very good in terms of Wi-Fi. Now, the other cool thing is that you do not need any extra dongles or cables, so it's perfect for cameras and gimbals or steadicams. The signal quality will also strongly depend on your network and Wi-Fi equipment. Uh, we'll cover tips for improving Wi-Fi reliability in a future video, uh, but um, there's loads of optimizations that you can do. Uh, for instance, here we use uh, Ubiquiti, uh, Unifi Wi-Fi, and it's really, really good. So if you have a good Wi-Fi network, uh, you maximize your um, chances of having a very good connection too. If your camera supports control over wired LAN, uh, you can uh, pair it uh, via wired LAN using a USB to LAN adapter. Now, it's important to note that the way Sony cameras work is that if uh, we move from uh, Wi-Fi to wired LAN on the camera, we're going to have to pair the camera again. So to allow for a bit of flexibility, uh, what you can do is pair the camera twice. So the first time as we did in uh, wireless mode and you can pair the camera again with a USB LAN adapter which will then make you uh, two different connections one via wired LAN and one via Wi-Fi so this is what we are going to do right now to pair the camera via wired LAN make sure to use a compatible USB to LAN adapter I've put a few in the description that are compatible it's really important because using the wrong one can actually damage the camera so uh, it's worth double checking this one. So we're going to go into the preferences page here and we're going to go into uh, middle control pro and add a Sony camera again, add a Sony camera, other Sony camera and wired LAN. So make sure the camera is in uh, video mode and manual. So now um, we're going to go into the network menu. We're not going to turn off the remote function because uh, this was there to allow us to remove access authentication. Since we did that, we don't have to do it again. So I'm just going to press next. Same access auth, we already turned it off. So next. And so now take your uh, USB to LAN adapter and connect it to the camera. There we go. Once it's connected, you can go back into the menu and then in the network menu, USB LAN tethering. And we're going to go into USB LAN connection. It's connecting. And when your dongle is confirmed compatible, it will say connected. If it says connection fail, it means the dongle is uh, not compatible. So. We're gonna press OK here. Uh, you can actually turn on USB LAN connection at launch, which will do this procedure automatically when the camera turns on. So this can be practical if you're using the camera on wired LAN all the time. Then, uh, so remote shoot function is already on, so we can move to the next step. And we're going to check if it got a, um, an IP address. So to do so, we go into a network, wired LAN, display wired LAN info. Now the IP address shows up, so the camera is properly connected to the network. We can press OK here. Now make sure to select the camera you want to connect to. So here it's the FX30, press next. Before you press the blue pair button, you need to go into the pairing menu. So uh, we're going to go into network, connection, remote shoot, remote shoot function, and then pairing. Now only when this shows up, you can press the pair button. So sometimes the, when the camera is already paired, you don't have to press the, the OK button, but if the OK button shows up, you need to press OK. And now you will see the camera on the left sidebar of middle control with a uh, blue icon, meaning it's connected. So we have the, both the, the wireless pairing and the wired LAN pairing here. So you can select its camera number here and uh, the, its live view will pop up and now you can adjust the different uh, settings of the camera. 
And there you have it. Uh, you can now control your Sony camera through your Atom switcher and middle control. Uh, this opens up, of course, a whole new world for live productions where uh, different camera brands can finally work together seamlessly. That's it for this tutorial. Um, if you have questions or run into issues, drop us uh, a comment below, or you can email us at support at middlethings.co. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.